All right. What is the best way to reach you? Phone, text, or email? Um, I would say text and phone. Both are the best ways to reach me. So would you rather text someone or would you rather have a phone call? I would rather start with a text and then go into a phone call. I'm <laughs> still kind of old want. school. <laughs> I'm kind of old school with that. I mean, we can start with the text, but then I, I also believe that things get lost in translation with text. So right. I would rather talk. It don't have to be a long conversation, but at least so we can get an idea of where we're at. You think texting is old school? No, no. I think phone calls are old school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Texting is texting is all new school. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely a phone call person. Like, I don't want to talk to you via text for four or five hours. Let's have a 10 minute phone call. And just yeah, and get I, through it. I think we can get through it quicker with a phone call, but some people just like to text. So I, I try to leave that open and then try to transition them to talk to me on the phone. <laughs> How very considerate. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Tech and Space Podcast. I'm your host, Leah, and this week we are joined by Randy, and I'm really happy to have this kind of conversation. This series, we're talking about real estate, home ownership, and investment. And this, is, this episode, we're talking a lot about investment in real estate, especially when it comes to licensing, because laws have changed recently. So we're going to have a conversation with Randy to talk about where he is in his journey, how he got started, and... If you want to get started, what resources you may need to look out for. So welcome, Randy. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me to the show. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? OK, well, I'm Randy Graham, I'm a real estate agent here in Georgia, I'm also a real estate investor um, I, out of Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Detroit, Michigan. Um, I have three kids married and and I'm a firefighter. Also, um, I own a few other businesses that um, that's outside of real estate. So you're just doing all the things. Uh, yeah, you got to have multiple <laughs> streams of income. It's, it's a necessity. Listen, one of the kids can pick up a couple of different businesses and then the yeah. other kid pick up. The, listen, everybody, it's a family affair. I can't, leave them, I can't leave them the fire trucks at Atlanta, but I can <laughs> I can definitely leave them a couple of houses. Absolutely. <laughs> So you, you're a real estate investor and a real estate agent, right? Yes. So what does that mean? Let's start with real estate investor. What does that mean? So as an investor, um, I started, what, two years ago, um, right at the beginning of COVID. I'll say I started before COVID. Um, mm -hmm. I started like that January of 2020 before we start shutting everything down, right when we were starting to find out that COVID was going to you know, be bad um as i went on and, and studied more learned a little couple things i learned about wholesaling learned about subject tools um learned about uh leveraging um different people as investors and different things like that but as we went on and COVID started i kind of didn't do anything because COVID was going on and i didn't know exactly what to do um but what i as i what i did know to do was to keep studying and as I studied, as you were talking about um, laws and different things like that changing, I noticed that a lot of laws were changing. And mm. so since since um, since I noticed those laws were changing, I said, well, let me get my real estate license so that I can be ahead of the curve. So if that change in law decides to come to Georgia, I, I'm already kind of in there. Um, my, my goal is to eventually get my license in other states, mm -hmm. um, just starting out here in Georgia. Um, I will say as an investor, having your license does limit you. So um, hmm. it, it's so it's it's just like anything. It's a catch 22 to everything. So you always have to look at the pros and cons of everything that you do. You don't have to have a license as an investor. Um, you can always you know, you can always try to get an agent that's investor friendly mm -hmm. and work with them. But um, but as a as a as an investor and an agent. As an agent, I can see property before other people can see it sometimes mm -hmm. um, that's going on the market. The other problem with that, though, is that with wholesaling, you can't wholesale as an agent. Um, and what is wholesaling? So wholesaling is is basically it's all about the contracts. Um, basically, just to put it in a quick nutshell without giving you numbers and everything like that. It's like you got a house on you got a house that you want to sell. 
Right. I put that house under contract. I flipped that contract to another investor. We all get paid. Oh, okay. Um, you get paid the money that I bought, the, that I put the house under contract for. Mm -hmm. I get paid whatever finder's fee I've worked into that contract to the other investor. And the other investor gets paid when he flips that house into, or, you know, fix and flip the house into something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot more of that, especially when we see the investors on TikTok and on Instagram and things like that, mm -hmm. where they yes. find out how they go, they talk about how they go through the uh, city records to see what houses are on the market and try to buy those real quick or even put them under contract real quick. So no money exchanges hands until they get to an investor who's willing to pay them more so that they can get that finder's fee. Um, and the customer gets paid, that um, person gets paid, and then the investor, like you said, um, will flip the house or do whatever they're going to do so they can get paid as well. Yeah. So as a as someone who's been in it for the last couple of years, what kind of trends are you noticing as someone who is essentially getting their feet wet and just starting out? Well, as, as we know, um, there's a housing shortage in America, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, when you start looking at the numbers, um, I, I don't have the numbers totally correct, but just, just think about it this way. Um, from 1970 to 2000, each decade, there were over 20 million homes built in America each decade. And then from, from 20, actually, I'm sorry, from 20, from 1970 to 2010, Oh, Every okay. decade, there was over 2 million homes built. Um, from 2010 to 2020, we only had somewhere around 6 million homes built in America. And in 2020, no homes were really built because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So you definitely have a housing shortage. Um, so that has that has definitely made the every market kind of trend up because you got people coming in um, wanting homes and they're willing to spend you know, 30 and 40 and $50,000 over the asking price, which right. is um, raised to raise um, home values a lot. Um, as in Georgia right now, it is a seller's market. I'm sorry. I didn't ask you where, where are you located? I'm in North Carolina. You're in North Carolina. So I, I believe in North Carolina, there's also, it's also a seller's market right now. I think um, across the country. We are so, in the and, yeah, and, and that, I mean, there's, there's a couple spots where, where it's kind of balanced, mm. but overall, um, in most places, my hometown, Detroit, it's a, it's a seller's market. Um, so you, you're looking all over the country at a seller's market. And so what that's making it, what they're making the industry do is basically, um, even for investors, unless you're very um, involved in, in part-time investors, it's, it's been kind of hard for them because they're not able to um, get those properties that they need to keep their business going. As the market is kind of on this trending up, people are people are seeing like the fast money that can be made, you know, wanting to know, well, how much capital do I need if I wanted to be an investor? So we already talked about um, some laws that are changing mm -hmm. that are requiring people to have their license to be a real estate investor. What else, what other resources would people need uh, besides like the knowledge and the in the connections? Um, okay. would they need would they need like twenty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, two houses already that they've sold? What kinds of things would a real estate investor who are, who is just starting out or who's just getting into it, what kinds of things would they need? Well, the one thing with wholesaling is you don't really need anything, no money, no credit. Um, because you're just flipping contracts. So as a wholesaler, you really can get started in investing with zero money down. That's 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 real. Um, I, you know, when I was young, um, back in the 90s, I remember Carlton Sheets used to have a little little infomercial that would come on at one, two o'clock in the morning. And, um, <laughs> you know, you hear them say, uh, no money down, no, no, you know, no credit. And and, and you know, everybody looked at that like it was, you know, like it was it was, it was, it was like, that's not real. But it was real, you know, and, and really come to find out, I was just I was listening to a old um, 
tape of a guy named Neville Goddard back from like 1920, 30 or 40 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And even, even in that tape, he talked about wholesaling. He didn't call it wholesaling, but what he described was basically wholesaling. And I was like, wow, they've been doing this for years. So it's, even though it's something that we're just starting to find out because of YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that, this right. has been going on for years and years and years. And so you can definitely get in it. No money down, um, no credit. Um, but it's, it is going to, the only thing I will say that you're probably going to need is you're going to need money to fi- to be able to find the properties, which means that you may, you may have to spend some money um, going to, you know, going to your city hall or whatever, or you may have to spend money on software like PropStream um, so that you can find properties and find people to call. You may have to spend money on skip tracing to um, be able to find those um, customers. If, if you don't know what skip tracing is, it's basically um, companies that will, you know, get phone numbers and email addresses for you. Um, so you're trying to find those, those, um, those homeowners so that you can, um, mm-hmm. So that you can uh, call them and see if they are willing to sell their home to you. Um, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. What was you about to say? So, let's say that you know someone went to town hall. They went to city hall and they got a town hall. They went to city hall <laughs> and they, and uh, you know found found the properties, the paperwork, and, and things like that. Was able to contact the owners what kind of time frame and it may differ state to state but we're specifically talking about Georgia because that's where you're licensed okay so what kind of time frame are we working with here so if someone is able they call the homeowner the homeowner is like well I wasn't really thinking about selling they make an offer the homeowner agrees now how long can that house stay under contract before it's flipped okay so I've seen I've seen people keep houses under contract for 30, 60, 90 days. Mm-hmm. I've seen people get a contract and flip the contract in in four or five days. Um, all that depends on the wholesaler or the investor. Mm-hmm. All that depends on the investor. All that depends on the actual homeowner too. Um, homeowner may have to move out of the property. So that may take a little bit longer. Right, um, right. Typically on the investing side, what, what's taking you time is finding a buyer. Mm. Um, as a wholesaler. Now, if you are, as the investor, if you are the actual buyer and you're going to buy it, typically what's going to take you the longest time is is if they're in the home, getting them out the home or, you know, figuring that thing out. So person goes to City Hall or they go to whatever software application site that they need to go to locate the property. Okay. Con- get in contact with the owner. The owner says, yes, I want to sell. They have the contract. They are then looking for a buyer if the, unless the investor themselves are the buyer. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they find, so then, then that means that this person would have to be in the real estate game to actually have relationships with people who are willing to buy. Yes. Yeah, so, so this, as a, as an investor, you want, you know, everybody everybody does it differently. Everybody has their their niche and their and their way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the best ways to do it is to find property. If you find property, you will find buyers. But mm-hmm. it's always good to let people know that you are investing and have a network of buyers that you know that you can talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, have a network of buyers get get you some buyers. Um, you can go on um, bigger pockets, um, connected investors, um, just different sites that you can go on and try to find buyers. You can you can you can promote yourself on Craigslist and get people to call you. Mm-hmm. Um, um, most know most of those <laughs> most of the investors they kind of most of the, the the more savvy investors they know all the little tricks of the trade. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I probably get I would say weekly I probably get about fifty emails with people sending me homes to buy mm. um, um, because of, because of, I, I, I have an LLC, um, an investment LLC. So I, I get about 50 emails a month where people call, you know, either trying to get me to buy a home or partner with me on finding them a buyer. 
Um, I also get emails from other from buyers that's like, hey, do you have a home? Because I'm an agent also, and I make myself let people know that I'm investor friendly. Um, I also hmm. get calls from agents or or other investors that are saying, hey, um, you got any homes that you that you're looking at? You got anything that's off market? Um, or anything that you um about to put on market that we can, you know, talk talk to the owners about. Hmm. So I mean, um, I get those calls probably. I would say those calls I get maybe 10 to 20 times a week or calls or emails. And then on the, on the buyer side, I probably get about 50 homes, different homes sent to me weekly to buy. So um, it's, it's really about networking, whether you, whether you got the, the, the funds at the time or not, mm -hmm. you still want to network. You still want people to know that you're out here and you're out here looking um, because you can always, leverage yourself into getting a property so when you have to do business relations that can be a little sticky like that 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 can kind of go both ways mm -hmm. how do you build a good reputation in that type of community uh I, I always say be truthful be honest let them know you're starting let them know you're just starting out let them know um i am looking for property mm -hmm. um you know, I'm looking for a certain type of property, whatever property it is. Um, uh, I always say uh, try to find a niche. Um, and so your niche may be single family homes. It could be multifamily homes. Um, some people niche is mobile homes. Um, hmm. so, you know, you try to some people niche, you know, like a real estate agent. Some people niche is luxury homes. That's what they do. Um, so you, you try to find your niche. And once you find that niche, that's not saying that you can't go outside of that niche, but. Um, you just let them know, you be honest, Hey, this is where I'm at. This is, uh, if you're just starting out, let them know you're just starting out. Um, if you've been doing it for years, let them know you've been doing it for years. If, if, um, <laughs> if you got investors, like if you got people that you, that you work with that, Oh, I'm just starting out, but I got people I'm working with. That's, you know, you may have a mentor, um, and okay. the mentor lets you use their name. And so you say, Hey, I've been, I got this mentor. I, I work with this guy. I work with him. And that person, you know, can help you get more, um, you know, more contacts and more relationships because because of that person's name. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know who, you know, in the real estate investor world that's on YouTube. But you got, you know, people like Brent Daniels. Um, you got um, Max Maxwell and they have different mentoring programs and um and um, maybe one day I'll have a mentoring program. You never know. Hey, speaking into existence. Yep. <laughs> so what are some pitfalls that can happen that people should probably be on the lookout for? Not saying that, you know, you can avoid every um, every pitfall, but there is space in the journey for you to learn a lesson, whether you learn it the hard way or the easy way. Mm -hmm. What are some pitfalls that some people face when they are starting out. I, I don't know. My grandmother used to always say, your eyes is bigger than your belly when I would get a big plate of food and didn't eat it all. <laughs> um, and I think that happens in real estate sometimes. Um, you know, people get a hold of a little bit of money and they mm -hmm. take that money and leverage it into too many homes mm. or too many properties. And and um, there's a such thing as a little bit too big at too fast. Yeah, um, the and then there's system. also the yeah. such thing as too big, even if you've been in it for a long time, because you just can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I say the main the main thing is take it slow, uh, be decisive, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't when I say take it slow, I'm not saying mull over it forever because you got to move fast in making your decisions, right, right? Right when I say take it slow, I'm saying if you got a property under contract right now and you still and you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out um where you're gonna move this property and who you got to buy the property from you or whatever mm -hmm. or if you got to flip the property and you're trying to figure out who you're gonna flip the property to and and are you gonna put it on the market or do you got somebody that's want to buy it are you gonna hold it and rent it figure that out first before you start moving to the next property mm -hmm. and yeah. then as you do it you can build a system you can build your system and you'll know what your system is I would say probably once you get five to 10 houses in, you kind of got a, a basis of how you want to do things. And then from there, you can you can keep that system going. 
but starting off definitely try to keep it one two at a time and just grow from there don't get too don't get too anxious um it's gonna always be property out here it, yeah. and it's gonna always be land that you can buy it's uh, real estate is not going anywhere um it's gonna be here forever so <laughs> it's no i mean it's gonna always be something out there um everybody ain't got all you know somebody always gonna want to sell I, I talked to a, a gentleman the other day um looking at some property that he has and he like i'm i'm in my 70s and i'm ready to give up all my properties which let me know okay he got other properties that he's looking at giving up to besides mm. one i was just looking at so i mean you know there's always somebody looking to get out there's always somebody that's faltering and they and they fail so you can get in mm -hmm. but just make sure the main pitfall to me is doing too much at one time and over leveraging yourself to the point where you kind of put yourself in debt. Debt can be good if you're using it to get an asset. Right. But if you got if you got something that's under debt and is not really being an asset now, it's a detriment to you. Mm. So how do you know when you have achieved success in this field? Ooh, what is that? What is what is success to you? Are, are you saying for me or yeah, for so you personally? No, nope, just for Randy. Me personally, I have mm -hmm. a goal. I have a goal over the next uh, five to ten years, which I don't think it will take five to ten years. That's just my goal. Mm -hmm. But um, but my goal is a hundred plus units okay. of property. I, I want a hundred plus units of um, real estate property. I, the money part of it is not. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much money that is. I can't tell you how much money, how much cash flow that is coming in a month or anything for me, success would be knowing that I own a hundred, you know, hundred units of property and then going from there. Um, so whether that's a few, um, apartment buildings or whether that's, um, it, it definitely won't be a hundred homes because <laughs> I, 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 my niche will be multifamily. Um, the only thing I want to do with single family homes as is work with them as an agent. Um, oh, okay. Okay. I don't really want to invest in single family homes unless it's a luxury home and we're doing something, you know, big with, um, with Airbnb or VRBO. Um, that's the only way I would do something like that, but I, I want to work with, um, multifamily homes and, and success for me would be to reach that goal. That's the goal okay. I set for myself. Do you think that's a lofty goal or is that something that's absolutely attainable in that time frame? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably, it's, it's probably, um, just from what I can see, it's not lofty. It's probably, it may be a little, you know, too, too less of a goal. Um, but I have, but you have to go from your mind frame and I know my mind frame right now is that's where I'm at. <laughs> so, so, um, when I get, maybe when I get to 50, Maybe I'll change up some things okay. and then move on from there and be like, you know what? A hundred ain't enough. Um, or maybe I get to 50 and a and hundred is still enough. And I say, okay, a hundred is still enough. And that's good. And we can go from there and I can use that money to work other businesses. Um, like I said, my goal, I love real estate. I really do. Um, just like I love being a firefighter. Um, my goal is to make sure that I have a legacy that I can leave to my children. Absolutely. Um, and, um, and when when I when I pass on, they got property that they can hold on to sell or do whatever they need to do with it. Hopefully they would hold on to it and continue to make the money off of it, continue to make it better. Or um, at least one of those kids would take the business <laughs> and, and grow it from there. Maybe they'll see the hundred and be like, oh, I can do three hundred. Oh, OK. You know, you know, uh, you know, maybe they'll do that and go from there. And, and that's 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 where I'm at. I just want. I want um I got other dreams that I want to you know attain as far as business owner. I, I'm wearing this shirt right here. Um I probably can't see it, but I'm wearing this shirt. That's a that's a business of mine. It's got the little crown on it. Um <laughs> that's another business of mine. This this shirt company, um, in Fall May Apparel. Uh and and then I got some goals that I have with um doing some media stuff, some um multimedia stuff. Ah, man of many talents. So at the so I what I really appreciated was even prior to talking about the networking necessities, the mentorship, what you need, the resources, 
and even what to look out for and how to, you know, maintain your integrity in this process. You talked about education and how important it was for you to learn as much as you needed to learn. When it comes to education in real estate, how do you know that you are dealing with a reputable resource or reputable school or program for you to be licensed? Okay. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, ask people. Um, I think the biggest problem that we have as, as people is we don't reach out to other people that we know that's doing something. Um, before I before I became a real estate agent, I, I reached out to a, a, a high school friend of mine that I saw was a real estate agent. And from what I could tell at the time, I, I thought she was um, she was part time in it. And I knew I would be, quote unquote, part time in it because I would be a, um, I was firefighting at the time um, and still is firefighting. So um, I reached out to her, asked her some questions. Um, and then, you know, I, I went to a I didn't go to a just any school. I, I went to the, the Georgia MLS school. It was it was no way that that was that wasn't reputable. It's the Georgia MLS. So so I, right. I just I, I for me, I went with what I knew was reputable um, as mm -hmm. far as mentors go. Um, I, I, I think you got to follow your heart. Um, it's a lot of people out here um, selling their mentoring programs, selling their coaching programs. Um, what I've noticed with some is is you they'll tell you about all these deals that they've done, but they never necessarily show you the deals. They don't necessarily tell you about the deals. Um, so I, I, I would say, you know, let's see the deals that they've done. Mm -hmm. um, if they could show me some deals, they could show me some of the property that they're working on. Um, that's a person to probably look into and get with. Um, Bigger Pockets is always a, a good program. YouTube is always, um, YouTube is always good to find out information. Mm -hmm. It don't mean that they. It don't mean that those are the people you're gonna use as mentors, but they can be a mentor from afar. They can, you know, you just watch the you you watch to get the education off of it. Um, other thing I did was um, I would go on Amazon and look up books, and and read the comments on the books. And um, so when I would read the comments on the books, if the comments sound like it was something that was of sub of substance, mm -hmm. then I would take it. Um, and I have a mentor as an agent too, because that um, when you when you onboard with EXP, they give you a mentor, and so my mentor kind of there also kind of helped me with um, learning, you know, telling me what books to read and different things. What is like EXP? EXP Realty is um, it's it's the brokerage company that I work for. Oh, as, okay. As a real estate agent. Okay. So EXP Realty is the brokerage company I work for as a real estate agent. It's um, it's uh it's all virtual mm. everything that they do is all virtual they call themselves the netflix of um of real estate yeah. um uh, and, and they, they it's a very good company they have a lot of um perks and benefits um mm -hmm. some people don't like it some people like it um i don't know if you ever heard of grant cardone um no. he he is a partner with with exp he's a um if you ever get a chance watch um go on discovery channel and watch the undercover billionaire um he is he was one of the guys on that show the show he the the season he was on was season two and he was on there with um two two female um entrepreneurs um one of them happened to be tim um happened to be um timberland's ex-wife oh yeah it was a good show and um and so I got with EXP because, like I said, when I talked to my high school friend, that's the company she was with. And so um, I joined in up under her. Um, she's out of Texas. Um, if you're in Texas listening to this, um, if you're in the Dallas area, hit Lakeisha, uh, Lakeisha Morgan up <laughs> with Stash, um, with Stash, the Stash group. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they are doing good business down there. And so that I, I just think you, if you when you're learning you just go with don't reinvent the wheel just go with the stuff that you know you know go with go with people you know go with the things that's already popular and then you can branch out from there um and learn from there and and of course you'll find some other niches and different things that's new but or not really new just probably just something that's an offshoot of something else but go with what you know first 
That is a really good point because there are so many people now, especially with this renaissance of entrepreneurship that mm -hmm. we're seeing, that a lot of people feel that they have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to it, when it comes to how to do business, what business to do it in. It's like, well, I don't want to be like this person. Well, there's a model out there for almost every type of business. And regardless if the model fits perfectly, there are models that you could tweak. But when people spend years to create something from scratch, when they could have taken 10 days to learn what someone else has built, I think that puts them far ahead of the curve than anyone else. Yeah, and, it, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that could definitely be overload also with with education. And, yes. and I, I don't know. I, I don't know if you ever heard people talk about paralysis analysis. I mean, analysis, yeah. paralysis, or whatever. And so and so um, yep, you yep. can definitely have an overload of getting information. Yes. And you can. And like I said, and like even in wholesaling, every there's I've listened to two or I've listened to four, four or five different people. Mm -hmm. And each one of them sometimes have just different ways that they do things. Right. Um, and you have to take those four. Like for me, I had to take those four or five and figure out which one of those ways was best for me. Exactly. And strategize from there. Exactly. And then, you know, and then you have to always, you know, do the analytics, make see if it's working. Um, anything you do, you have to do the analytics, see if it's working. And then from there, tweak it. Um, and if it don't work at all, you know, scrap it and try something new, try something else, but not necessarily new, just something that somebody else is, you know, okay, I, I tried that guy's idea. Let me try this person's idea because if, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, because there's just so many, there's so many ways to do something. I mean, and, and so you have to find a way that works for you. Exactly. There, like you said, analysis paralysis is something that a lot of people who are overthinkers they get stuck in. Let me consume as much information as I can, but they're not necessarily being decisive about it, in which we've talked about a little bit on this. Well, no, we talked about it in great deal, actually, on the show a few different times. And some ways to get out of that is to figure out decisively what it is that you want to do. It's like, do you want to be in business or do you want to shadow someone? Do you want to kind of figure out what level you want to be in. I actually just had this conversation with someone else who wanted to be in real estate, but they couldn't figure out what part of real estate they wanted to be in. So they were trying to figure out, well, do I want to be an agent? Well, I like looking at houses, but I don't really want the pressure of having to make sure that houses are on the market, keep calling people, things like that. Well, I want to be, I can be an appraiser, but appraisal is not really my thing. That's not really what I want to do but I can be a notary because my schedule allows for it. So there's different levels of figuring out what fits your personality best. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to be in real estate or you want to be in business or you want to do whatever it is, I think it's always great. Like you said, you talk to your high school friend, talk to somebody out here because you'll trip over anybody who's in real estate and knows a little bit about something that will at least connect you to the next person, especially with social media. Yes. With social media, like I, that's how I found you on social media. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just I was looking for people who were in real estate, different aspects of it. And I was like, hey, I think and I and I think it was because I noticed you had just started because sometimes I talk to people who have been in it for 20, 30 years and they talk way up here. And I'm like, listen, I, <laughs> I got I got nothing. I know what a house is. We can start yeah. there. <laughs> but talking I understand. To somebody who just got into it, at least you still understand that there is a different language that is spoken and you can really still put it in layman's terms. So with hopefully those who are listening out there, if you're looking to get into real estate, um, you know, you do your research, like Randy said, do the research, figure out what you want to do, get your niche, get your mentor, get your education and your licensing. If it's necessary where you are, because laws are a change in. Yeah. And, and one thing about me is um, I'm willing to help anybody. Um, like I said, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a mentoring program because at the end of the day, I don't feel I've done enough deals to have a mentoring program. So um, what, so what level should you achieve to be a mentor? I, you know, I, everybody does it differently. I, you know, and for me, I feel like you, you should have, 
if not a number of years, a number of deals. I can't tell you what how many deals that would be for me to feel feel that way. I think at, I think at least 20, 20, 30, maybe maybe more. But I mean, I think you should have the deals and I think you should be able to show the paperwork from the deals and be able to let these let the people that you're mentoring know. OK, yeah, because I, I can give you a whole bunch of information. I can, I can somebody can call me right now and I can give them all the information they need to get started. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there's people out there that I feel that there's that's what they're selling. Mm-hmm. They're basically selling the information to get started, which you know, which is basically free. You can go on YouTube and get that. <laughs> so um, you the ignition, not the car. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so so <laughs> I'm so I my thing is I would want to be in a position to as a mentor bring other mentors in or bring other people other investors in mm-hmm. that can say okay, um, hey yeah you can work with me. I'll show you how to, I'll go with you to show you how to do this deal. Um, and I want to be in that position to where I'm comfortable enough to say, okay, besides us being on the internet, besides us going and if I need, if you need to call me and I get on the phone with you, we get on the phone together. Um, that's, you know, and, and I think that's, that's the way it should be. Um, and yeah, you, I, you going to pay me for my time, but at the end of the day, I I don't want to get a person and have them pay me three thousand dollars for six months, mm. and in that six months time, you, you only you only do one deal. That's that's not good to me. That's not a good that's not a good investment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and I would feel I would feel kind of you know messed up. But some people don't. They like hey you you didn't do your you didn't do your part, but maybe we didn't do our part because there was not enough shown of how to do. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's all good. I mean, I think I think people had their 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 mind is in the right place when they go into it, but I just don't think that always some of the mentors that's out there, they don't have the experience that we think they have. <laughs> right. I like the integrity on that though, because a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people are just like, look, um, I just got licensed yesterday. I can tell you all you need to know to get licensed, and you could have access. To this life and if you listen to the language they're literally just selling you the ignition not even the yeah. key just yeah. the ignition and you have to pretty much figure it out there's so many um coaching mentorship master classes that these people are giving and they're not um, what good is it for you to have a mentor who specializes in single family homes when your niche your niche is multifamily homes mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. different. It's yeah, you're still in property, but it's different markets. It's yeah. a different different way to talk to people. It's a different um, different conversation about money. So I I wholeheartedly agree, and I'm happy that you're one of the people who's like, no, I want to make sure that what you get is going to be beneficial to you. Like, because when yeah. I charge you money, you're going to get value with for it. Yeah, I want you to make your money back. Right. You know, I you know, and um. And I'm not saying some if you, if you make most likely if you if you make one real estate deal, you made your money back most mm-hmm. likely uh, on a you know on most of those mentoring programs. If you if you make one deal, most likely you made your money back. But I would like to see the numbers of people that actually make the deals. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean I would. I mean I, I know some people do, and then again, some of that is based on the person. Some people. They get in programs and they they don't really take advantage of everything that's in the program, right? And stuff like that. So that that's right. always part of it too. And um, and you know, some people got money to blow, so they you know, some people they they just love to go from program to program to program. That's not me. If I get in a program <laughs> and the program don't work, or or I don't feel like or I don't feel like I learned something from it, I'm done. And then I'm going somewhere in my head. I'm I'm gonna go and study somewhere where I can get the. If I'm like. I got the information from here. I must, it must be somewhere else I can go get it. Mm-hmm. And um, and I might be able to find somewhere I can go get it for free, or I might be able to find network with somebody that's willing to take me and show me some things. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Is there anything else you would like the people um to know? Um, you know, real estate is is popping. That's this the thing. I, I believe it is the pathway to wealth. Um, I believe it's I, I, there's many pathways to wealth, mm-hmm. YouTube channels and and all types of things people do to get wealth. But I think um, 
real estate. I even those people, I think they end up eventually going still going into real estate mm. um, because you have to find a tax shelter for your money. Um, you, you have to be able to put that money somewhere and, and where else better to put it in into an asset that just keeps giving. Um, especially if you hold on to it and you're getting cash flow out of it. So I think um, if you're looking into real estate, get into it. If um, if you're interested in knowing anything about real estate, you got any questions, I'm willing to answer. Um, you can reach me at Instagram at uh, Randy R. Graham, um, Facebook, Randy R. Graham, Twitter, the Randy R. Graham, um, TikTok, Snapchat, all those, just <laughs> look up Randy R. Graham. You'll see this bald head. And um and you can um you can eat you can DM me or whatever and we can talk about it. Oh great, because that's what I was gonna I was gonna ask. Are you accessible? Because some people are willing to have the conversation, but they're not really accessible to too many. So I'm glad to hear that you're accessible to get resources from. So yeah, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm accessible. I'm accessible and we may be able to help each other. You may have some information that I don't hey. have. So yes, always open for collaboration. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for hey, being thank here. Thank you. I appreciate you. And, um, really, really, anytime really, really you need me this. to talk about anything, I, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we may be talking about one of your other 30 businesses pretty soon. Hey, day. I appreciate that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Randy, for being on the show. And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Take a Space Podcast. I've been your host, Leah, joined by Randy Graham. Please make sure to follow our guest at Randy R. Graham on all the socials. Make sure you reach out to him if you need any resources for real estate and I'm sure if you ask him a question and he doesn't know it, he'll point you in the right direction. Sure Make sure to follow us on social media at Take a Space Pod. That's Take a Space P-O-D on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And let us know in the comments if you were into real estate, what mentorship classes you've taken or what's keeping you from taking the next step. And make sure to follow us on YouTube as well at Champions of Discourse or hashtag Take a Space Pod. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.